Hey guys, how's it going? Dale here. Today I have a customer's HP 15.6 inch laptop. Gonna do a little updating and upgrading on it. Uh, the back, quick backstory is she got this. It's an older couple. I'm just kind of trying to help them out. They got this a couple of years ago. Didn't really know what to do with it. Wasn't sure how to set it up, blah, blah, blah. When they brought it in, it had, of course, Windows 10. It was the uh, 20H2 edition. I've already updated it to 22H2, Windows 10. And got rid of all the bloatware from HP, the trial version, McAfee stuff, things like that, just to kind of clean it up. Because they're not going to do a whole lot with it. But they also brought in an old Toshiba laptop that still had Windows 7. So they've been using that even though they had bought this because they wasn't really sure what to do. Um, but this only has a 256 gigabyte M.2 SSD in it. So I'm going to upgrade it to just to a 512 M.2 SSD because I looked under Toshiba and the amount of data that I'm going to transfer when I'm all done would have put their SSD about two thirds full already. So she does a lot of scrapbooking and stuff like that. So anyway, they didn't want to put a lot of money into it. So we went with the cheaper 512 gigabyte SSD. It's got eight gigabytes of memory. It has a Ryzen 5. Uh, 3500U CPU in it, uh, Vega graphics, nothing real special. The model is 15-EF0025WM. So it's not a bad laptop, it's not a touch screen. So what I'm gonna do, like I said, I've already updated to 22H2 Windows 10. It will run Windows 11, but she really wants to stay with Windows 10 for now. I just told her when she's ready, bring it back. I'll do the Windows 11 upgrade for free for her. So, cause I could do that now. We just said, no, this is Windows 10. She's used Windows 10 a little bit, but that's what we decided. So anyway, I'm just gonna open up, get the factory SSD out. I'm gonna clone it onto this. Like I said, I could do a clean install, but she had already had um, a couple of saved passwords in here and her email and stuff like that. So I just figured it's just as easy, probably quicker to do a clone. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do. Now, if you're doing this yourself and you're cloning using the manufacturers like free cloning software, for example, and you're using some kind of a dongle, you know, USB, this will support a M.2 NVMe SSD. You're going to do it that way. Uh, a couple things, make sure if it's got uh, device encryption enabled. This one doesn't. Uh, make sure that's disabled before you try cloning because it won't work if you got encryption turned on of any kind, including BitLocker. So um, that's about it. So I'm just going to flip it over here and get into it. There's only two exposed <coughs> screws on this. One here, one here, and then there's some under these rubber feet that we have to carefully pull up. They're kind of just self-adhesive on there when you're done. They should go back on with the factory adhesive, if not just some basic glue or maybe a couple little specks of super glue, mainly on the end so they don't peel up on you. So I'm going to get into it, try to get these rubbers off without making too big of a mess. You can see, try not to stretch them, makes them a little bit longer, a little trickier to get back on, if you can help it. Not the end of the world if you do. So that front one, the, the one in the back is a little thicker, so you got to make sure you put it back on the right spot. So these ones come up pretty, pretty easy. And there's plenty of sticky on there, as you can see. I'm trying to get fuzzies on them. So we're just going to pop the screws out. There's these two on the side. There's three in the back and three along the front here. Now I'm going to use a number zero magnetic tip Phillips screwdriver. Seems to bite about the best. A one would probably work too. A number one Phillips. Now on the back, the two screws closest to the hinges, they're a little beefier, so make sure they're black. Make sure you get them back in the right hole. The like I hear all the time, HP stands for hinge problem. I get a as most techie guys that work on this stuff every day, I see a lot of laptops, not just HP, but a lot of HPs with the broken hinges where they break away from the lid, the cover, because they're just really cheap, cheap, thin plastic. And you got to end up replacing the whole lid. The hinges usually survive, but the 
plastic mounting areas for the screws on the lid don't. All right, so we got all of our screws out. I'll turn it back over. I hate these glossy screens. I've never been a fan. I like the anti-glare, the HD screens. So I'm gonna use a little plastic, pretty firm, stiff plastic little spudger tool here. I call the triangle spudger tool. I'm just gonna start in the seam, get it off the bottom, should pop off. But these aren't too hard to get into. I do a lot of work on these HPs. Upgrading, fixing, placing batteries, Wi-Fi cards, broken hinges. Just not an HP fan. Even their higher end stuff. Get a lot of those, see a lot of those broken hinges as well. So we got a good start on it here. Let me just make sure. Yep, it's coming loose. So we're going to carefully close it. And I'm going to try to get along the front. Along the front here. Now don't just rip it off. Just kind of be gentle. Sometimes you need a little persuasion along the, <clears throat> along the back here. Now they're getting another nylon plastic type tool. Just don't want to break the chassis around where the ports are. That's not very good. Usually if you jiggle it, they come right off, but uh, not today. Darn it. Make sure I didn't forget a screw. Been there, done that. There we go. So we didn't we didn't break anything. Yay! Just like that. We'll put that over there. No place for a two and a half inch drive in these. Uh, here's our M.2 SSD over here. Um, let's. Uh, you can't disconnect the battery. You physically have to take the battery out if you're careful. But for sake of the video so I don't get yelled at in the comment comments I'm going to take the battery out there's one two three four five screws so we don't have any power going to the board just in case better to be safe than sorry especially if you're doing this once and never doing it again I'm using a number zero Phillips for the battery as well but it, it comes out really easy But I'm going to do the cloning over on my cloning station over there. It goes really quick. I use a Cronus, the, like the Enterprise Edition. There's the battery, came right out. Um, but I always tell people, if you're going to go to the trouble uh, taking the battery out, carefully open it and hit the power button a couple of times. Because there can still be some juice or charge left in the capacitors and things like that floating around in there. So we're going to do this a few times just to make sure. In case you drop a screw or your screwdriver slips or something. There's just one mounting screw right here for the SSD. I'm going to pop it out. Gently, carefully wiggle it out just like that. Got the HP sticker on it. We don't care about that. <clears throat> But like I said, it has eight gigabytes of RAM. I did talk to him about more RAM, but you know, just because they didn't want to do that. So it's got eight gigs. You could put another eight in there and give it 16 gigs of dual channel, no problem. Looks looks pretty darn clean. It's been set, it's been sitting for over a year and a half, basically. So um, so I'm going to go ahead and open up my new drive here, and I'm going to go over to my cloning station. Get the clone going, it shouldn't take too long. Put it back in, go from there. All right, guys. So I'll be back in just a few. All right, everybody, I'm back. The clone went pretty good. It took about you know, a little under 20 minutes, a little longer than, I, than some of them. But anyway, we got our 256 cloned onto our brand new 512 here. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and install it back in the laptop. All right. I, um, like I said, I have a computer over there dedicated just for mainly cloning and data recovery. Use the Acronis, like the Enterprise Edition. It allows me to do clones outside the Windows environment. It goes a lot faster, typically. And if you're cloning a, a, a hard drive or a, even SS, SSD, but mainly a hard drive that has like bad sectors, for example, it can typically it'll it'll still clone the drive, and you know without having to do a clean install. So I'm going to replace the battery now. Once you put put your battery back in, just be careful. Famous last words. Come on. Just like that. And we got juice flowing through it, so you just want to be careful. Make sure those are good and snug. hands and arms are all scratched up. My cat likes to play really rough. <laughs> I fight back though. So I'm not going to completely button this up when I do any project like this until I know everything's good. I, you know, mainly putting the screws and the little sticky rubber feet back on there because you don't want to be peeling those on and off more than you have to. <clears throat> <sighs> Winding down for the day. It's been busy around here today. It's like almost every day. All right, so we got a new M.2 SSD. Got the battery put back in. So let's go ahead and cover it up. Like I said, this does have an extra slot for more RAM. There is a connector on the motherboard for a two and a half inch drive over here. You could use like double sided, like some 3M double sided sticky tape. Works really well. Just need to get a cable. There are sellers on eBay that sell these SATA cables, um, or directly from HP. But you have probably better luck looking on eBay or something like that. So let's try to just kind of snap this back into place. Be careful when you're squeezing. You don't want to squeeze too hard on the lid because you could damage your screen even from the backside there. Yeah, that looks like spam. Somebody answer that phone. All right, that's good for now. So I'm gonna carefully open it back up. <sighs> All the dust that come out of the keyboard. So now when I first turn this on, typically it's gonna do like a check disk. It's gonna check all the partitions. That always, always happens 100% of the time when, you, when whenever I clone outside the laptop. So let's just go ahead and part it back on. And she did have a little bit of data in a couple of her folders, so the cloning was a good idea when she first got it. She did put some Im images and things like that on here. So, like I said, you could do a clean install. And this is normal just because, you know, we took out the battery. So just hit enter to skip by that. Just want to double check, make sure your date and time are still good when, when all is said and done. And a blue screen. That's not good. Now yeah, let's do this. Do a hard shutdown. Not too concerned about that. Now yeah, maybe I need to go into the BIOS. Um, boo, 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 boo. Let's see, date and time look right. Sure, boot options are good. Secure boot still on. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Shouldn't be doing that. Maybe I will have to do a clean install. The clone went good, didn't have any issues. I have to go into repair and do a quick check disk on it. Issues with cloning. Very rare that that happens, but let's see what, let's see what it tells us here.
That rarely happens getting a blue screen like that after a clone. Well, repairing disc errors. <clears throat> Didn't have any issues during the clone, went smooth. At least I thought. This doesn't take over an hour to complete. <laughs> we'll let that run its course. Sorry about the sniffles. Winter came back here in Michigan. We didn't have any snow for the longest time, and then it, we got dumped on today about six inches of heavy wet snow. Why did you check those? Partitions. Ah, there, that's what I was looking for. You don't want to skip those. If you hit any key, it'll skip that. Let's just let it cycle through all these little repair things here. Good. Tragedy averted. So let's sign in real quick. It looks like we're going to be okay. I'm going to check for Windows updates and things like that. I already updated to 22H2. <coughs> Going to make sure our drive is the way it's supposed to be. There's our new 512 gigabyte SSD. Gotta love one drive. So yeah, I think we're gonna be okay. Been doing this long enough that not to panic too much when you get blue screen or some weird thing like that after a clone. Oops. Let me do a thought I just chose that. I'm going to do a quick restart. Just to make sure. And then I'm going to button it up and get the old Toshiba over there and transfer their data, all their other major stuff. Yeah, we're going to be just fine. All right, so that went pretty good. Um, just remember if you're cloning and you're using one of these dongles or something, just make sure device security or, or encryption, device encryption is disabled before you clone. You might want to run a, you know, go to your, <clears throat> if, again, if you're using something like this and not outside the computer, go to your drive and run the, go to properties, go to tools here, and do the error checking or maybe even go to the DOS, to the command prompt, sorry. <laughs> and run check disk slash F or even slash R. Just to make sure your drives and your files are in good shape before you clone. All right, that's all I got today, guys. I appreciate watching. Check out more of my, my videos. Don't forget to hit the, the like button and get notified for more new videos. Thanks for watching.